What the actual heck is going on? This is a joke. I'm fed up. We've got 64 miles of range. Oh my, could this get any harder? One day it's going to roll down a hill or something. That is absolutely terrible. Good morning, everyone. It is a bitterly cold day here in England. It's minus two. I'm taking the electric van out for its first proper run today and it's perfect conditions to test it in because cold weather, battery life goes right down and this is real. For example, last night I tried to charge it up. Normally I charge within a window of four hours between midnight and four so that I get cheap electricity. I woke up at four just to check that it had charged up and I realized it only charges at 3.6 kilowatts. So it was like not even half full. So I had to set it on manual charge and I think we've just about got enough battery now to get going. Anyway, I'm not gonna waffle. I just wanna shout out our Australian viewers. You guys, congratulations for being born in the right place. If a kangaroo lived here, its ears would literally fall off from the freezing, bitter weather. So that's enough of me being miserable about the weather. We can jump in the van. We've got a few jobs to do today, so we'll take you on board with us. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and let's get into it. Right, so we've got 64 miles of range. It's got 31 miles on the clock, so at the end of the day, we'll calculate how many miles we actually got out of that 64 miles of range. First thing I'm missing already is a heated windscreen. Doesn't seem to have one. I think that's because Ford have the patent on it. So I'm actually gonna have to scrape the screen, except I don't have a screen scraper. So what I'm gonna do, turn the hot air on, and that's gonna burn like 10 miles of range off. And then we're gonna get to our first job, run out of battery and have to get towed. That is how I'm envisioning today, but maybe I'm being a bit pessimistic. So let's just give it a go and see. While I'm waiting for it to heat up, I'm gonna have a cup of tea and we'll get on the road. Right, so just wound the window down. I thought I'd just try and like scrape a bit of the ice off by winding it up and down. I've wound it down and now it won't go up. It just keeps, just keeps going down every time. I have no idea why. This is really annoying. It's minus two outside. I do not want cold air rushing into the car. I'm trying to heat the cab up to melt the snow. This is ridiculous. Come on, come on. What the heck? What the actual heck is going on? I don't understand. Like, let me see if I can... Ah, there we go. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like, the... it's like they've broken the wind. That's so weird. It's like it's getting stuck here. Anyway, that's kind of done the trick, but it's not a good start, man. But I mean, hopefully having it plugged in will help anyway. Oh. Sacrificing my hands for the good of electrical work. Oh man. Can't believe I don't own a scraper, that's ridiculous. But I've just had vehicles that have got heated windscreens for the last few years. So I've not even thought about it. Ah, it's cold. <gasps> How do they do it in Germany? This is a German vehicle. It must get below minus two in Germany. If you can't do your windows up because they've got a bit of ice on, that is ridiculous. I mean, this is an expensive vehicle, like 55 grand if you wanna buy one of these new. And you can't open or close the windows properly when it's minus two. Not impressed so far. So I was just like, I'm gonna put the heated seats on full blast try and get as much heat in here as I can. And then I saw hiding down here, there's a little button that looks like a heated windscreen. So I've been a complete idiot probably. I'm gonna turn that on and see if it works. So it's now 15 minutes later and this windscreen is not doing anything. I think my cup of tea 
being a hell under the windscreen is a more powerful heated windscreen than whatever kind of heating element they're supposed to have in this. I have a feeling that it's just completely disabled and it doesn't actually do anything, that heated windscreen button. Uh, but I'm going to have to come up with another solution. So I'm going to go ahead and get some hot water out of the house, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do because they say it can crack your windscreen or something. But I have no choice. I'm just going to do that and then it will clear the windscreen, hopefully, and we can get driving because my handprints have literally frozen over now. <laughs> it's like, it's a complete joke. Good old Smeg Kettle has saved the day. <laughs> Definitely better than an electric windscreen that doesn't work. So I'm supposed to just press this button and then you should be able to just unplug it. It'll stop charging, but it's not stopping charging. This van is a heap of junk. <laughs> I'm not happy. <laughs> this is a really bad start to the day. Come on. Press and hold maybe? No. Oh my goodness. So it seems like you can't actually stop it from charging by pressing that button. So I'm gonna to have to stop it from charging using my Hypervolt app. Stop charging. And then hopefully that will release this. If it doesn't, then we literally can't go anywhere because we can't unplug the van. <laughs> This is a joke. I now realise how great Tesla is compared to everyone, well maybe not everyone else, maybe this is like the worst electric vehicle on the planet, I don't know. But, come on, that's it, stopped. Okay, so we've got a yellow light on the Hypervolt. So now we've got an orange light on here, and hopefully if I press it now, what the heck, come on. I, I, maybe I should have read the instructions or something, but it shouldn't be that difficult. Ah, oh, now it's charging again. Okay. So I think if I do this, yeah, I, I've unlocked it and now the charging port has unlocked, finally. It's a bit faffy. And also the other thing I noticed about this, which is just a bugbear of mine, is that the little plasticky bit here that holds the CCS point in place actually blocks the type 2 plug from going in so you can't get the type 2 plug all the way in and it won't lock you have to sort of move this out of the way then plug that in and then it works which is just another evidence of why probably building an EV from the ground up is a better idea than converting a diesel vehicle into an EV so finally we can make our way over to BEW now as long as the van will actually roll forwards when I press the accelerator pedal. Let's see. Let's give this a go. Why, why does it not? Why does it, wanna, why does it not want to drive? I've unplugged it, haven't I? Okay, let's put it into park again. Let's then put it into neutral. Now let's put it into drive. We're in drive, it says we're in drive, and it literally doesn't want to do anything. I forgot to take the handbrake off. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh no, it's still not working. What the? Come on, you. Yes, it's minus one outside, we know, okay? Just let me drive. I'm fed up. It should not be this difficult to drive. Let's turn the air off. Put it into drive. I think we're going to have to take the caddy. <laughs> I'm going to send out an SOS in a minute. Sting would be a happy man right now. Better now. So we have... I managed to get the key out of the ignition. Now it, it says ready instead of before it was on some kind of like charge or off mode. So hopefully now. Oh, that's better. Okay. Oh, handbrake off. <laughs> Let's go. Oh man, finally. Okay, it's literally taken us nearly an hour just to get off my driveway. So now we're heading to the wholesalers. An elderly gentleman who is a friend of mine called me and 
he said that he's got a bit of a problem with his heating and he thinks it's the room thermostat. So we're going over there to have a quick look at that and then we're supposed to be doing an EICR in about 40 minutes from now. I've got a feeling that we're gonna, the whole day is just gonna kind of go out the window now. I hate being late, it just drives me nuts. Like, I'm so obsessed with punctuality and if something out of my control makes me late, even though it's out of my control, I just hate it. Our company policy is we will always arrive on time or we'll let you know if we're running late as a disclaimer because sometimes stuff like this does happen but I still hate it when it happens. Anyway, ran over, see you at the wholesalers. I'm, I am so used to my Tesla, which has an auto handbrake, locks itself. I literally just pulled up, didn't like put it into park or anything, didn't put the handbrake on. And I, I'm gonna do that one day, it's gonna roll down a hill or something. Anyway, we're here at BEW there, my favorite wholesalers. Don't tell anyone. Tom, who's a legend, looks after us very well. And Mark too, they're both excellent chaps. Oh, who's, who's this uh, artisan? Oh. Ah. <laughs> you right? <laughs> so this is where you hang out. This is where you hang out in the mornings. You right, Tom? Oh, them stat. Oh, you've got both. That's the problem with these ones. I think they need a neutral. I won't take it for a spin, it might run out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of room. It's bigger than my living room. Nice. Very nice. Gee. <laughs> I bet it doesn't get far with this amount of, well, once it's loaded though. So has the little one got that sort of set up in the back? Exactly the same, mate. Nice. Linen clips, stuffing glands, food, a few crates of beer <laughs> for Friday. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of space, isn't it? Is, isn't it? Slightly smaller one here, which is nice. And then in the back, you've got a nice drawer here. So you've skipped everything you've got. You've and, these. and these are the same. They're absolutely massive. So plan of attack. Can you go to this EICR? I've got to go to this little job and then I'll meet you at the EICR. Okay, so it's 8.40, we are 40 minutes late. We're going to be at my customers at, um, let's have a look, 11 minutes it says, so that's not too bad. It's warmed up slightly, it's minus half a degree now, Celsius for our international viewers. Half a degree Fahrenheit would be extremely cold. We've got 60 miles of range left. We've only actually driven a mile since we left home. Heading now to this little call out job. And then once that's done, we're going to do an EICR. So we're at the first job, just a little thermostat check. Hopefully it's a simple job. We can't really film in here. So I'll update you when I come back out, see how we got on. So update on that, um, it's all done. It was, there wasn't really a problem. He was just worried because the thermostat, sometimes you touch it and then it clicks but because they had had it set to 18 degrees and so you know normally it's around the 18 degree mark in the house anyway so the heating is not going to come on so that was it really i took the thermostat open tested the wiring it all seemed kind of fine and i looked at the wiring center quickly and stuff just to make sure there was nothing dodgy going on there and everything seems fine so yeah just a little favor for my friend and now i'm heading over to the eicr <laughs> I believe this van is limited to a certain speed, so I'm going to literally put my foot to the floor. We're on the motorway now. <laughs> yeah, 53. Uh, is that? Oh no, we're doing we're doing 59. 
it basically isn't going to go over that by the looks of it. And I've got like a, a roofer up my backside, so um, pull over into the slow lane if you need to get from A to B quickly. <laughs> don't get one of these vans. <laughs> I'm really selling it, aren't I? <laughs> Right, so we've arrived at the EICR. We've got 41 miles of range left. We've done 50 miles, um, well, 50 miles on the clock. I think when we left, we, it was like 33 or something. So we've done uh, 17 miles, but we've lost over 25 miles of range. So that gives you an idea of real world versus, um, you know, estimated. So we're gonna jump in and do this EICR now with Lee. See you inside. Gas bond is literally bonded there, and the meter cover's just on the other side. Cool. The only thing weird is the cooker and oven situation, because you've got one that says cooker, mm -hmm. then you've got one that said, hit, said oven and hob, which I've turned on and off, and I found the spur that that was doing. Okay. So I think that just does the ov oven now, but that's mm. only on a 20 amp 2.5, and then you've got a new hob, induction hob running, so I don't know what that old cooker is doing or where it is, but mm. we'll to, that's on like a 10 mil. Yeah. Someone's moved two of the sockets in the kitchen onto the same 20 amp so they could fit the induction hob because okay. there weren't no spare yeah. ways, yeah. even though there is a spare way, huh. but they've stuck it on the RCD side. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's do a little prediction of what we might find that is dodgy. So, I'm thinking that RCD loft. might might not trip as it should. Yeah. The loft wiring, yeah, definitely. I'm probably I mean, looking at the stuff. the make of the board, Magnus. I've yeah. Never heard of it. And it's, the way the um, tails are bought. That's, isn't that a brand of cider? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know they'd gone into making switch gear as well. Apple Magnus. <laughs> the Henley blocks upside down. Yep. So whoever's added that and added the loft board, I'd imagine it was a bit of a builder. Yeah, and the, yeah. the way they've locked it off. Oh yes, yeah, nice. A bit uh, of the old tape. electrical tape tag. Board I think we can fit an eight, we'll fit an oh, eighteen way yeah. acre board in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we move it down to so that the bottom of the board is just on top of that wooden uh, uh, yeah, plate, go as far it over. will go. That will just go in there. I think there's some T and E clipped. Out. It's sort of outside, but it's under shelter. But mm. I'd still probably see free it. Recommend it getting changed to high tough or something. So how about we do it like this? If you could go around and whip some covers off things and do visual inspection on 10% of the sockets, switches, yeah. lights, I will start in here filling out the uh, schedule for the boards, yep. putting in some basic details. I'll do a ZE and then we'll get the wonder lead and we'll do a long wonder lead test on the bonding connections to make sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. This is what I hate when the kitchen's been redone at some point and someone's tiled over the tops of the sockets and the spurs and they're literally just all corked and siliconed in. You've got to damage it all to get it out. Oh my, what on earth? Oh. Give me the camera. Could this get any harder? You got the hob in this tiny little cupboard. They've done it on the side, and then to make matters worse, they've even stuck the little white caps over the screws. Give me an hour, and I'll take the cover off. Little tip from a trusty little source, e -fix. Bit of blue tack, dab it on the little white caps that are covering the screws, and it should just pull them out. No. <laughs> not this time. They probably work when it's first been put in, but not when they've been in for years. They work this time. Just needs a bit of, uh, bit of hope. 
So we're going to do a load of testing here now. I'm not going to show you too much detail because you've seen me do loads of EICRs before. But if you are interested in a bit more of a deep dive with EICR and particularly to know what kind of certification software we use, I'll leave a link up here. We're going to do a kind of a deep dive video of our certification software, which is Mega Cert Suite. So if you're interested in that, head to the link up here and you can watch that video. So now what we're gonna do is a long wander lead test and we're gonna go around the house and just check the various points to see if anything metallic that should be earthed is earthed. This is one of my favorite tests because it's really easy to do and it shows you any like metal light fittings or switches or things that aren't actually earthed, which often there are stuff that isn't earthed and it's not visible without you taking the fitting down usually. We'll find the main bond, which I think Lee's probably already found. We'll clamp our tester on this end and, and the other end and we'll do that long wander lead reading. So this is our tool of the day today. This is the Martindale long wander lead. I got it off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for it. But um, they've redesigned it recently. The previous one that I had, it was like yellow and it was all encased, which is the same one that Lee's got. I ordered that off Amazon, or that was the picture at least, but this is what's been sent. So I presume they've redesigned it. But what I like about this is it's really easy to pull off. It's like hardly any resistance. So we can just clamp it onto our conductor here and then we can run out and um, do our bonding test on the water bond. The thing that I sometimes forget, which is really important not to forget, is to do the, uh, to null the leads first you you want to remove the resistance of this so see that that is the resistance of my long wander lead it's like 1.07 ohms so if i press again then it nulls it down to zero. Oh. oh man i'm getting too old for this right so this bonding clamp is absolutely shocking right whoever's done this is complete diy kind of job probably it's a i know we always say kitchen fitters kitchen fitters but it's in a kitchen and a bodge job in a kitchen in my experience is usually done by kitchen fitters so look at this right <laughs> like they've literally banded a little bit of copper round with some kind of nut and bolt and then they just tuck the wire in there and it's completely you know it just pulls out so that is absolutely rubbish yeah you know what anyway they've connected it on the wrong pipe so this is actually what should be the main bonding conductor because that is the main supply pipe that comes in so the bonding conductor should be here but they've done it on here which is just like a totally different pipe so we're going to put it on here which is where it should be there's a weird old six mil on there which just goes through the wall so we can probably cut that off and then just connect this new 10 mil on but what we'll do is do our continuity test on the cable first just to see if it actually is the cable that we think it is what reading have we got on there max 1.09 1.09 brilliant so that is the cable that we we need do you want me to sh show you what I've taken off just so you know? Yeah. In case it gets forgotten to be screwed back. Yeah, that's good. So I've took the bar from light off. It okay. looks like it's supposed to be a class two fitting because that little uh, yeah. yeah. The fan. Oh, wow. It's literally just been chopped, block, uh, well, kind oh of blocked. Oh my goodness. And yeah. all the um, ducting just fell straight off. But I don't even know if there's a junction box above this, because there's only one cable at this, there's no isolator outside. Or when they're, done, when they're done a loft conversion. That's not that's, a fan actually, that's just a light, isn't it? And then it's got an inline fan in the loft, I guess. Yeah, but the lofts are now loft conversion. So probably, I wouldn't mind betting they've just built over the top of it. It's all. probably hidden in like, yeah. That one might be the water heater radial. Yeah. That might come off of a socket, but I mean, that <laughs> is just floating inside the cupboard, so it oh might want to be put down to be disconnected or something. Yeah, we'll just... There's no load coming out of either of them. Are you old enough to remember using these junction boxes? Yeah, when I first started. Yeah, me to, too. used to do loads of down lights like that. <sighs> Absolutely tons of them. This is one little bugbear that I have. People leaving these little cardboard things on plugs. 
they just, I just, I don't know why they do it. You know, they put this on when you buy it. It tells you how the plug's wired up. You should throw these away because they can get damp and then the moisture can kind of cause problems with the plug. So just take it off before you first start using an appliance you're not supposed to leave it on not a lot of people realize that another metal light here and this is where these r2 tests really come in handy is the amount of times that we find diyers who put their own light fittings up you know it used to be a pendant they change it for a metal light and they just don't connect the earth properly and they don't realize because it works but it's actually not safe but this one's fine so that's good it's like a long fishing line So R2 testing is done. Everything was fine actually. There's nothing that's not earth. So that's a nice change. Let me know in the comments if you've got a secret to how to do this without getting it tangled up. Reel this up and then we'll move on to our R1 and R2 testing at our furthest points. Yeah, great. So Lee's just been to the wholesalers to grab the bonded clamps and he's also picked up coffee what a legend got a nice coffee to warm us up because the power's off in the house it goes cold quite quickly actually i've got my just my t-shirt but it's getting a little bit chilly so coffee gives us a warm up this is a nightmare i hate it when they do this right so what the previous electricians have done is they've done a ring circuit so you've got two 2.5 twin earths but they've sleeved both of the CPCs together in one piece of sleeving. And so it means you can't separate them. So you've got to disconnect it, you've got to pull the sleeving off, separate them, and then test them. And then you've got to put new sleeving back on. It's just a real pain. And I don't really understand why they did that in the past. Anyway, I'm gonna rip this sleeving off. At least they've not twisted them together. So that's kind of bonus points. And we've got our ends now separated. <laughs> So I'm going to do a ring test and then we're going to do a crossover test, which we do. I know it's a bit extra, but that's what we like to do here at Artisan. We go a little bit extra. We do our crossover tests. We do our RN, R1 test as well. So that's with the neutral crossover. We go around, we test all the sockets and we just make sure that we've got good readings on all the sockets. So some of you guys might have seen, Lee made this short video that's gone like viral. It's had like 5 million views. And some of the comments in there are so funny, right? But what has come out from it is that Lee is the love child of Elon Musk and Brad Pitt. <laughs> right. if, you, if you cross Elon Musk and Brad Pitt, you get Lee. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the Brad Pitt, but I don't know where Elon Musk comes into. <laughs> the amount of comments that said like, oh, he looks just like Elon Musk. I was like, that is really? so weird. And then I thought, actually, I if you change the blonde account. to like the... <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. I can not believe how many people have said, is that Elon Musk? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a compliment I'd quite yeah, like to. I'd, I'd take his bank, bank account any day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll be starting a space exploration company soon. Yeah, electric spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the that is the future. <laughs> Who does that? Like, they've got twin and earth clips and then they've just screwed them in with little screws. It's like a clear like DIY job, um, isn't it? And you could just do with like flapping an arm around, would maybe clipping all the way around, couldn't you? Yeah. But then also from that socket goes round, and then these sheds have got light sockets, and you've got twin and earth clipped along there, which I said. Yeah. I mean, it's not in the elements as such, but it's still not ideal outside, is it? No. Like weather, like temperatures yeah, and just, stuff. It looks like it's not in the greatest of conditions, doesn't it? So. So it could probably yeah. do with just some lights and sockets getting redone in here, maybe. Yeah. So there's one cable there, there's one cable there, there's one cable there. So there's going to be some junction box above the ceiling. And apparently there's some fan above the ceiling, but I don't know where it would be. Literally, you've got a fan there and it comes out just next to that window outside. So I wonder if I can... Oh, 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 where's it going, where's it going? That looks like a little... Like it could be a little fanny fan. <laughs> Yep, there is a fan up there. Well done, loft extension guys, you're fluffed up. So, 
that EICR is done. We're going now to show Lee the new caddy. Gonna get his reaction, see what he thinks of it, because we're gonna hand that over to him and then over the holidays, he's gonna be able to load it all up and make it his own. We've got 42 miles of range left. Probably it'll be dark by the time we get there. It's crazy, I hate this time of year for the darkness. It's like so depressing, really. I don't know if you guys, any of you guys suffer from like seasonal affective disorder, but I know a lot of people do and it is horrible. I don't get it really badly, but I just I just always feel a bit rubbish at this time of year. I just feel like I need to get away and get some sunshine, so. I always forget to take the handbrake off. <laughs> right, let's go. The range is literally dropping by the second 39 miles now. We've done less than 500 yards and we've lost three miles of range. So it's not looking hopeful. At this rate, we're gonna get home with like two miles of range. And we've literally just been pottering around town all day. So yeah, not looking hopeful for this van. I think it's gonna be a museum piece. I might, I might have to turn it into like a mobile YouTube studio or something where I can film videos about tools and basically hardly drive it around. <laughs> that might work. <laughs> but it's a very expensive mobile studio. Um, but it could be cool. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The traffic is terrible. I don't know what's happened. I was so happy this morning. There was no traffic. I was thinking, yeah, it's the school holidays, no traffic. Rush hour on the way home, still a heck of a lot of traffic. Mileage update, we have 32 miles of range left. I'm going to pump up the hot air a little bit because my windscreen is getting extremely steamed up. So I'm going to put some hot air on the windscreen. That's probably going to reduce the range slightly, but we're doing all right so far. I mean, we had 65 when we left home this morning. We're on 32 left now. We've done 54 miles in total in this van. I think we'd done 33 when we left this morning. That means we've actually done 21 miles and we've lost about 33 miles of range. Percentage-wise, that is absolutely terrible. If you think of the percentage difference between the estimated range and the actual real life range, it's probably 30% less in real life, which is pretty bad, especially when you're playing with a small number of miles. I'm so exhausted now. It's been just a weird day, like, stressful and manic and um, probably entertaining for you guys so I hope so that's <laughs> every cloud has a silvery lining so I hope you've enjoyed today's video I'm gonna sign off now because my brain is fried I think I'm gonna get home and have a long hot bath try and de-stress and tomorrow is another day so I will see you then dear viewers thank you for watching subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't done so already and we'll see you on the next one have a great day